consumer warning before you trim the tree or hang the wreath. Why are they selling decorations with lead? And also, first you have to worry about toxic toys. You've been hearing so much about the recalls. Now, a warning that Christmas wreaths could be a problem as well. Why does one of the country's biggest retailer chains still have them on the shelves? We're going to be talking to a customer who did her own investigation. What she found out, coming up on American Morning. Hey, a look at a story coming up in our next half hour here in American Morning that you can't miss. Holiday items, holiday items with lead warnings. One woman says she didn't notice the warning label until she was hanging up her Christmas wreath, and it was right there. That's right, and she said she found this warning. It didn't say may, it didn't say could, it says does cause cancer or birth defects. I was saying it does contain lead. So why are wreaths like that still on the store shelves? She's going to bring her story. She did some digging, and then she did some calling, and we're going to find out why they're still on the shelves this holiday season when American Morning comes right back. Something toxic at Target. You may already have it hanging on your front door. A warning about Christmas wreaths and why exposure could lead to cancer. That's ahead on American Morning. All right, Reynolds, thanks very much for that. Now let's take it back to New York, and here's Karen. And we have a holiday health alert for you now, John. A long list of lead-tainted toys that you don't want under your tree. Of course, we've heard about the recalls throughout the year. Well, now there is concern that the tree itself might be toxic, or the lights, or the wreath that you hang on your door. In fact, this wreath right here that we have up on our table uh, had a warning spelled out. In fact, the warning is right on the back of the box. It says, handling the plastic used in this product exposes you to lead, a chemical known to the state of California to cause birth defects and other reproductive harm. And it goes on to say, wash hands after use. That's right here on the back of this box. Well, Anna Elm of Tampa bought the wreath containing the lead at Target. She found out that the shelves are full of them, and she joins us now from Tampa. Thanks for being with us, Anna. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, you know, the warning's right here on the box. It's not very big. It, you, actually, you could pretty much miss it because we're so used to seeing these types of warnings. Um, you know, it's just, if this is the humongous box, this is the tiny little warning right here uh, in the corner. So what did you do after you brought this home? Well, that's correct. I did miss it completely. I hung this wreath on the door. My little boy helped me. He was thrilled. He's three years old. It's his first holiday seasonal wreath. And I never even gave it a second thought. I honestly presumed that the tag said, you know, it just said where the product had been made. And a couple of hours later, I decided to retrieve the tag just in case uh, I needed to return the item, read the, read the label, read it again, and I read it again. I literally could not believe what I was reading. Uh, two hours later, after handling the wreath with my child, it said that we had been exposed to lead. Yeah, and, you know, it is unbelievable when you see that wash your hands after use. So you decided to pack this up, take it back to Target. What was the reaction when you went back there? Well, I can, uh, the, the manager that I did the return with looked as stunned as I did. Uh, they didn't know how to answer my question, which was, why are you selling this product if it contains lead? Uh, I should say this could have happened anywhere. I just happened to be shopping at Target. Uh, my understanding is this is the same product that all the major retailers are carrying. Yeah, it says made in China, also over here on the label. You've done some research. What part of this uh, wreath did they say is the, is the part that contains lead? My understanding is it's the green, the green part. It's the covering over the wirings. Uh, it's the same covering that is in the trees, it's in the wreaths, it's on the lights. It's basically lead. Uh, it, it's a lead-covered wiring. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about the wires that we see on all the Christmas lights, that familiar hunter green colored wiring. You know, we did talk to um, Target, and we asked them to respond to your story. They said in a written statement, guest safety is a top priority for Target. The label indicates that certain chemicals may be present but exist in trace amounts, which are within federal safety limits. Products with the label do in feed in fact meet all applicable product safety requirements. Now, does that statement make you feel any better, Anna? It does not. Um, I don't know that this is taking into account that a small child is going to have a lot of repeated exposure with these products. Um, unlike an adult, a child is going to be putting their hands in their mouth. Um, I would like to see these warning labels on products outside of California. I, as a consumer, want to know. Yeah, well, um, you know, good digging on your part. Obviously, you're uh, going to be much more vigilant and aware of this type of situation in the future. Uh, Anna Elm, thanks for being with us. 
Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, so we want to bring in uh, Sanjay now. Uh, apparently, the reason that it says it snowed in the state of California is because that's one of the only states that requires that type of warning. It says that that label is only required in California, but because they sell these everywhere, they don't want to have to repackage them in boxes. But it's, it's what we're talking about, which is that hunter green, you know, covering that you right. see on all things that you plug in around Christmas time. Is that something that we should be alarmed about being exposed to? Well, California created a list of banned substances, and this is where a lot of what we're hearing about is this list of banned substances and phthalates, some concentrations of lead on that uh, on that list. We also talked about this recently, Karen. You remember with iPod uh, headphones as well? The little headphones people were, were concerned about not the earbuds so much, but actually the the wire that's itself that actually goes to the to the earbuds. Uh, the, the answer is, should we be concerned, is we, we just don't know really for sure. But I will say something about lead in particular. I've been researching this quite a bit, given everything we've learned about uh, the, some of the products from China this summer. And that is that, you know, if you look back to the 60s, 60 micrograms per deciliter was considered a high level. Uh, fast forward 40 years, and now it's considered 10. What happened in the last 40 years? Lead stayed the same. We learn more about what it does to our body. So. How much of a danger is a reef like this? We don't know for sure, but the, the science seems to be catching up here. Yeah, I just don't understand why. I mean, even though study after study is showing it's dangerous, they still use it. They, they, They're still using it in things that we use every day. They, they still use it, and we know that now they say 10 micrograms per decimal right. is a safe amount, but, but you know, a few years from now it might be five, and it's, just, it's an unknown sort of thing, unknown entity right now, and a lot of people are sort of erring on the side of caution as we see in California. Some people are saying the science isn't there yet. Sanjay, thank you. All right, thank you. John? Thank <laughs> you.